My future mother-in-law is the absolute worst person I've ever met in my life. I'm 30 years old and my boyfriend is 31 and we've been together for 8 months. He's the sweetest and most caring man I've ever met in my life, but the biggest surprise is when I met his mother. I'm a natural redhead, so when we sat down for dinner, she asked me if my parents had the same color hair. And then she proceeds to ask me, does the carpet match the drapes? I looked over to my boyfriend who seemed equally as shocked, but he didn't say anything. And when I didn't respond back, she said, don't worry, I'll ask my son about it later. She then went on to attack my appearance and said my hair was too curly and I really needed to learn how to run a brush through my hair and think about my appearance more when I'm out with her son. And when I lost my appetite, she told me it was a good thing that I'm watching what I eat because it would be a shame if I got any bigger. This was my first meeting with this woman and as soon as I got into my car, I burst into tears until I got home. I told my boyfriend I needed some time. He went into apology overload and this started by sending me flowers to my office every day and leaving me messages. He said he spoke with his mom and promised this would never happen again. With this reassurance, I decided to give it another chance. My husband and I have a three-year-old son together and there has never been any doubt that my husband is the father. Last week, he came to me and said for the last few months he had been plagued with this anxiety that our son is not his. They don't look identical but they definitely share similar features and I see my husband whenever I look at my son. I was obviously blindsided by this and asked him to explain why he thought that he wasn't the father. And he couldn't really provide an answer other than a gut feeling. He asked me for a paternity test and I said hell no. He said he could just do it without my permission and I told him if he did that I would never forgive him. My husband does not have a history of anxiety but he did lose his job back at the start of the pandemic. I thought he was just stressed out and I told him if he went to therapy and maybe started taking some anti-anxiety meds that I would consider getting the paternity test. He got upset and said that once he got the results of the test back he wouldn't be anxious anymore. He again threatened to just get the test without my permission and I told him that this would end our relationship. My friends and family are divided over this. Some think I should just take the test and others are saying he's being insane and that if I cave to this there's just going to be something else. I think there's something more serious going on here and I need some neutral perspective. So what would you guys do? My cousin in high school recently turned 18. She doesn't have a car and during her birthday weekend thought her parents were going to buy her one. When they didn't, she was pretty upset. I should note that I'm not very close with my cousin or the rest of my extended family for that matter. Anyways, my cousin texted me on the Friday before her birthday asking if she could take my car to the mall and then for an out of town road trip with her friends over the weekend. I tell her no. She begs and pleads with me but I tell her no again. My car is for me to drive and for me only. If she wants her own car, she can save up and buy one. She calls me a bitch and says that I ruined her birthday and that she's embarrassed because her friends think she got a car for her birthday and she doesn't have one. I don't respond to her and think nothing of it. I wake up on Saturday morning to find that my car has been egg and teepeed. And since the weather was warm outside, the raw egg baked into my car along with the dried up toilet paper destroying the paint. I check my security cameras and I find my cousin and a bunch of her stupid friends vandalizing my car. I obviously press charges and my cousin is in legal trouble. Her and her parents are pissed off at me for pressing charges, saying she's just a kid and she's going through a phase. Saying things like I'm almost 30 and I don't remember what it was like at that age. Do you think I took it too far by pressing charges on her? I grew up in a very warm and loving environment, but from what I was told, I was lucky. My sister and I had two drug addict parents who never took care of us. When my mom was pregnant with me, she smoked and got drunk pretty often, and when I was born, my sister was the only one who took care of me. When I was two months old, they left us both in a mall and left, and we never saw them again. An old couple found us and contacted the police and eventually decided to adopt us. Today I'm 19 and my sister is 34. We're really close, but I still live with my adopted family and she lives about 20 minutes away. So a couple of months ago, a friend and I took a DNA test and that's how I found out I have an aunt in the system. I immediately reached out to her and we agreed to meet in person, all without telling my sister a thing. We tried to figure things out, so I asked her if she has a brother or sister, and she told me that when she was 13, her older sister got pregnant while being drunk with her junkie boyfriend, and a month after giving birth, she ran away with the baby after some pretty intensive fights with their parents. They never found her, but stopped looking after a year and a half. When I saw the picture, I knew it was- My wedding was on September 21st, 2019. My cousin from my stepdad's side brought her boyfriend that she'd been seeing for about six months, and I've only seen him once before my wedding. We're all having a great time and the next thing I know, my cousin's boyfriend asks the DJ for the mic and goes to the center of the dance floor saying he has a special announcement to make and calls my cousin over. So I rush over and say, nope, no one is getting engaged during my special day, especially during my reception. 
You can get engaged later tonight, but not right now. It's my day. Thank you for understanding. And I go to walk away. My aunt, which is my cousin's mom, starts yelling at me and calling me an entitled brat. It causes a huge fight and they all end up leaving. My stepdad's mom says I was wrong and told me to apologize and call them over and allow him to propose. Needless to say, it didn't happen. Flash forward to Christmas. It was terrible. My stepdad's entire side was there and they were rude and ignoring my husband and I the entire time. And of course, my newly engaged cousin announces her wedding date, which is September 21st, 2020. I'm beyond pissed and not planning to go. It's my one year wedding anniversary. My cousin says they chose to get married on their one year engagement anniversary. But I don't. My sister-in-law and I have an agreement where she watches the kids three days a week and I watch hers three days a week. A couple of weeks ago, we had an argument and the next day I brought my kids to her house and dropped them off and left. When I got to work, I had 20 missed calls all from my sister-in-law saying I need to pick up the kids because she doesn't want to watch them due to our fight. And I had 45 minutes to get there or else she'll call the cops. It took me about an hour to get back to her house, but she already called the cops. So I had to stick around long enough to tell the officer that I didn't abandon my children. It was just miscommunication. I have since arranged for other childcare for my kids and I've been mostly ignoring her. However, she reached out and apologized and has asked if I'd be willing to go back to the old childcare arrangement. I work with kids. If I got abandonment on my record, I would never work in my field again, which she knew and her calling the police was a massive overreaction. She said that if I checked my phone, talked to her that morning, or came back when I was supposed to, she would not have needed to call the police and I did this to myself. I've told her that if she thinks I'm babysitting for her, she's delusional and she's on her own. Because of my refusal, it's looking like she may need to quit her job because my brother and her would pay more for a babysitter than they would earn from her working. My mom and brother are calling me an asshole because there was no consequence to her calling the police. 